Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time Life from Germany. Actually not live, but let's just pretend this was live because this sounds way cooler. Today I want to introduce you into the best settings to use when filming with the DJI Phantom 3, either with the DJI Phantom 3 Advanced or the DJI Phantom Professional, doesn't matter. What are the best settings to use uh, to achieve pro looking results? Let's just jump right into the DJI Pilot app. Enjoy this episode, stay tuned, subscribe. The very first thing that we do is we click at the DJI Pilot app icon and uh, this brings up the app and now we press at camera and now this takes us to the live view with all the camera settings that we're right now going to throw a look at. So at the right hand side we see all the different settings and now let's just go over them shortly. Of course I can't uh, talk about all the different things in depth because that would fill, I don't know, tons of films. Let's just get things done and uh, I will tell you what the best settings are for creating a cinematic look, a cool look to your images. Let's just get started. So now let's open up the first menu. The next thing that we find is the white balance. And usually the white balance, excuse me, is set to auto. And uh, that is absolutely fine if you just want to record things fast or if you haven't got a lot of time or knowledge about in, uh, about creating good images even though um, getting a proper white balance set yourself isn't really about being into photography a lot because it's all about what you want the picture to look like. So for example, let's just show some examples if I press sunny. The picture looks very warm, very reddish. And if I for example press that neon, the picture looks cooler or over here. Now the picture looks very cool like from an action scene and actually the white balance's job isn't giving um, the picture a style. For example, an action scene style, it's always only about having the white being white. So if you see a piece of paper or the white housings, they should be white and not bluish or reddish. We can add all those colors in post pro later on. So our job is to make the white white. And that works best by leaving it on either auto white balance or going into the custom. And right now we see 6000 K and this stands for 6000 degrees Kelvin. It's all about color temperature and color temperature is given in degrees Kelvin. So now if we lower that to 2000 degrees Kelvin, we can see that the, the image gets cooled down. And if we bring it up to 10,000 degrees Kelvin, we see that the image looks very warm. And now we can ourselves decide what we want. Now we're going to try to make the white look white 5200k looks very nice to me so i'm going to leave it that way for now yeah as i just said uh it's all about the white in the picture and the cool thing if you set it yourself custom and um, this means that it won't change from shot to shot all the different scenes that you film will look the same so you won't have one picture that looks a little more reddish and one that looks a little cooler something like that they will all look the same and this is awesome of course for bringing the stuff together in post pro for editing the next thing that we're going to throw a look at is the video size let's just bring up that menu and uh, it opens up this interesting looking menu if you're using the phantom 3 advanced um, you should of course choose the highest resolution available which would then be um, full hd and uh, you would only have to take care of the frame rate but we're getting to that later let's first off talk about the pro version and um, actually we're having four different formats to choose from the two at the top are 4k and the two below are ultra hd even though they name them 4k over here so the two at the top are 4k the image is a little wider which creates small black bars at the top and bottom of the images that you record when showing them and watching them on normal HDTV screens on normal computer monitors and that's why i always choose the ultra hd um before I choose the real 4K, the true DCI 4K. And um, so I'm choosing between these two and the difference between these two is simply the frame rate. One frame rate is 24 frames per second and the other 25. And now this one frame really adds a different look and style to the footage that you record. 24 frames per second looks a little stuttering almost but this is the real thing they use in film even though in film they mostly use 23.976 frames per second but 24 frames per second is super close to that so um 25 frames per second is a little more fluent but if you want to have a cinematic style choose 24 frames per second 
and of course the same you would choose uh, full HD with 24 frames per second if you wanted to create a cinematic look um, with the DJI Phantom 3 Advanced. The next thing that we're going to throw a look at is the style. Let's just bring that up. And uh, usually that is set on standard and now we can choose between um, landscape, soft or custom. I think the best thing is to leave things on standard. Next off let's talk about the color. And now this is pretty interesting. So those are the normal colors, but if you are a film pro or you want to be a film pro and you want to get used to things like that, you want to film in um, kind of a flat style. So the image reduces all the contrast and it takes out the saturation and uh, this is kind of the film style because in film they really reduce the, the colors and uh, if they want to add them they will do that in post later on. They have more flexibility in uh, editing all the pictures. For example if you uh, have a very very strong contrast right now set to the camera um, many details in the highlights or in uh, the shadows um, will simply disappear. They won't be there anymore. You can't see them. The black will only be a crushed black and the white only a big white. And um, now if you want to uh, keep all those details in the shadows or in the, uh, for example, lighter areas, we should always choose um, the log mode, which is a flat mode. As you can see, for example, again, I'm choosing the normal mode. Looks more colorful and more contrasty than the log mode. So this is always our first, first choice. And of course, if you want to get crazy, choose one of these down here. Film, dream, beach, art, vivid, black and white. But those are for playing around and messing around only. Next, let's click at more. And this brings up this small menu. The first thing that we can turn on is an overexposure warning. Uh, now there is nothing overexposed within this image. But give me a second, I can show you what this does. Yeah, this is the overexposure. So um, this is crazy. This is a little bit too much for showing. So the overexposure, if you turn that on, shows you with the zebra style um, if there is anything. Yeah, overexposed if some areas are too light. And um, if you need that, you can leave it turned on. I don't need the overexposure warning, so I'm going to turn it back off. So next off, let's turn on the histogram. The histogram is a feature that helps us um, setting the uh, light correctly in the image because it is um, this mountain like looking thing and um, actually you only need to know what it shows us actually. So now we gotta imagine that this picture is sliced into three segments. The left segment shows us the dark spots, the shadows, the, the, the black tones of an image. The right spot shows us the light areas, for example the sky or if there is, I don't know, yeah anything light, simply. The middle of the image shows us the midtones, and uh, which which are usually the, called the grays sometimes in German at least. And um, now what you should know is that all these uh, spots, all the mountains, should be in the middle of the picture. So if you have one of these mountains at the right or the left of the picture, you always know that there are some spots in the picture that are too dark or too light either. So um, of course, if the mountain for example would be at the right you would know wow there is a very very light spot within the picture and if they would be at the left side of the histogram you would know that there is one uh, one 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 area in the picture that is way too dark of course way too dark or way too light is only um, our only words because yeah it's about creativity as well if you want to have something um, I don't know, super light or something super dark. Uh, of course, you might want to create that effect, but usually you want all those mountains to be in the middle of the picture. So this histogram can be pretty helpful. Next up is video caption, and I haven't tried that out yet, but uh, people told me that the video caption would simply create kind of a log of the flight that uh, the camera records. And um, so you could, uh, I don't know, look through your flight data while watching the footage again. So I don't know, leave it on or off. This is up to you. I haven't really been trying that out yet because this isn't really interesting to, uh, I don't know, filmmaking because filmmaking isn't about the flight data. Filmmaking is about the look and the style and the story and all of that stuff. So next off, we find these interesting looking things. First off, well, let's click at grid and now we can um, add grid lines either those grid lines or even more of them. And um, I am used to use the first one, the grid lines, those, because most people try to keep images that they film, for example, in the middle of the image. 
and now I, I, I know it's way too less time to talk about filming techniques now but only a thought um, from from my side uh, right now so most people try for example if they're taking a photograph of a person they try to keep that person in the middle but um, the picture mostly looks nicer if you bring them to uh, one of these points I'm over here either or over here to those lines where those lines meet and um, it looks nicer it's named the rule of thirds but this is about photography so I'm using that because I always want to know that I'm not keeping um, the object that I'm keeping the focus on in the middle of the image when uh, really going for cinematic film and um, so I would always keep this grid on. Next up is the anti-flicker and this is about the region where you are currently at. Um, Usually in Europe we have 50 Hertz and in the United States we have 60 Hertz and now talking about the reasons why that is so is very complicated and historical and uh, let's just say the British brought the 50 Hertz to Europe and the Americans I don't know came up with the 60 Hertz this is about the electricity and stuff like that and we don't ha want to have any flicker when filming next is the quick review which is not interesting to us because this is for uh, photography reasons only next is the video format you can choose between MOF and mp4 um, this is simply up to you whatever your computer handles better MOF, for example is perfect for uh, Apple computers um, but it works on most uh, I don't know most PCs Windows uh, Microsoft computers as well so this is up to you I am keeping MOF as well even though I'm not working on an Apple computer next is NTSC or PAL this is about again the region that you're staying at and uh, PAL is again for Europe for most countries of Europe and NTSC is for the United States and Japan for example and if you want to look up a map there is a map chinka chinka -ching, -ching, ching check it out right now and um, yeah simply set it to wherever you're staying with your copter and where you're filming with your copter and next we only have the reset settings but we don't want to do this now after we set them up and uh, finally we have the format SD card and we want to we don't want to do this right now as well so let's just get the image even looking better by opening up the next menu this menu down here and now this brings up um, a very interesting menu because now we can set things manually as the ISO and the shutter we cannot change the aperture ourselves which is kind of sad but things are as things are and now we got to deal with the ISO and the shutter so now we always should remember to keep the ISO as low as possible because of course if we for example raise the ISO which is kind of stupid during daytime um, the image gets brighter and uh, we add more artifacts to the picture and um, so we always want to keep that low as low as possible and usually when filming we say that the shutter speed should be twice as much as the frame rate which with 24 frames per second would be 48 as the shutter speed but most cameras don't support that and that's why we're going to choose the closest which is 50 and now we see that the image is very very light so simply uh, understanding the shutter if for example the shutter is lower um, the image looks more fluent and if the shutter is very high it's very very crispy for example if you see blood splatters or uh, water particles uh, that is always shot with a very high shutter speed but a usual film is um, usually shot with 48 and because 48 isn't supported that's why we choose 50 and now this picture is too bright so what could we do actually we gotta get ND filters and all an ND filter does is it uh, darkens an image and uh, we can that way um, bring the shutter down and because I haven't got an ND filter for the DJI Phantom 3 yet and I'm waiting for the Snake River prototyping series to come out because I'm using the Snake River prototyping series with the DJI Phantom 2 and I'm very happy with them um, yeah I'm right now taking a normal filter of mine and holding that thing in front of the camera only to give you an effect of what um, this ND filter does let me just bring this in front of the lens of course the color is now going to look a little greenish and uh, but you see the image gets darker and uh, this is basically what this is about the ND filter darkens the image and that way we can bring down the shutter speed but now I gotta remove it again because this is simply a basic normal filter that I can <laughs> Um, stick onto this lens and uh, of course right now I have to bring the shutter up until I get the effect that I want again for example I don't know 
1000 looks nice. But of course, if you're now taking a look at birds flying by or cars driving down the road, you see that everything looks very, very crisp and sharp. And um, this is actually too much and is kind of unnatural. And that's why we usually choose 50. And uh, of course, we need ND filter for that. And if you know where, can, where I can already get awesome ND filters, let me know. I only know the Rage Cams one, but um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure if I should get those. <laughs> so if you know them and say, oh, Tom, they are really awesome, let me know in the comments. So thanks guys for watching. This was Tom from TDD Tom's Tech Time. Would be awesome if you would subscribe and leave a donation if you were happy with this tutorial. Tom'sTechTime.com slash donate. And next to that you can join my Facebook group Tom's... Oh no, it's not Tom's Tech Time dot something. It's Facebook.com slash groups slash Tom's Tech Time. Would be cool to meet you there. And uh, thanks for watching. Over and out. Yeah, bloody hell. I didn't notice that. Ah, uh, welcome. This is Tom from TTT Tom's Tea Time. Today, live from Liverpool, the German, as I am the German. Hey guys, what is up? This is Tom from TTT, the Tom's Tech Time. Hey guys, what's up? This is Tom from TTT, Tom's Tech Time. Hey, I'm from Alabama, man. <laughs> Der Schweizerische Akzent auf Englisch ist schwierig. Ja, grüezi miteinander. This is Tom from Tom's Tech Time. Oh, the Russian man again. I already forgot about him. Vladimir is greeting you with the big balls.